Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Noor Shehbaz. I am from Department of BS Biotechnology and my ID is 009. And today my presentation topic is OPI. First of all, I am going to talk about contents of my topic, which is Introduction to OPIs, Chemistry and Pharmacology of OPIs, Medical Duties of OPIs, Types of OPIs, OPI Abuse and Addiction, The OPI Epidemic, Regulation of OPIs, and Future of OPIs. Definition of OPIs OPIs are a class of drugs that include natural synthetic or semi-synthetic substances derived from the opium poppy plant are chemically similar compounds. These drugs act on the OPI receptors in the brain and other parts of the body to produce pain relief, sedation, and a sense of euphoria. However, OPIs also carry a high risk of dependence, addiction, and overdose. The term OPIs is often used interchangeably with OPAs, but there is a technical difference between the two. OPAs specifically refer to drugs that are derived directly from the opium poppy plant, such as morphine and codeine. On the other hand, OPIs encompass both natural OPIs and synthetic or semi-synthetic drugs such as oxycodone, hydrocodone, fentanyl, and heroin. Now I'm going to discuss history of OPIs. The history of OPIs is a complex and lengthy one, spanning several centuries. Here is a brief overview of the key milestones in the history of OPI, along with some notable references for further reading. Ancient origin, the use of opium, the raw material from which OPIs are derived, dates back to ancient civilizations such as Samar, where it was mentioned in clay tablets from around 2100 BCE. Opium, a history by Martin Booth provides a comprehensive exploration of opium's historical significance and its impact on various cultures, opium trade, and early medical use. The opium trade flourished during the 18th and 19th centuries, particularly involving British colonial powers and China. The Opium War, the addiction of one empire and the corruption of an other by W. Travis Hand III and Frank Nello examines the historical and political aspects of the Opium War. Isolation of Morphine In the early 19th century, German pharmacist Friedrich Sarkerner isolated morphine, the principal alcoholite in opium and named it after Morpheus, the Greek god of dreams, the imperial of all maladies. A biography of cancer by Siddhartha Mukherjee includes a section on the discovery and early medical use of morphine. Synthetic opioids. In the late 19th century, chemists began synthesizing new opioids, including heroin, and oxycodone in an attempt to find safer and more effective alternatives. Dreamland, the true tale of America's opiate epidemic by Sam Hunon discusses the emergence of synthetic opiates and their impact on addiction in the United States. Opiates in medicine and addiction. Opiates gain widespread use in medical settings for pain relief and anesthesia throughout the 20th century. However, the addictive nature of these drugs became increasingly evident. Pain, a political history by 
Kate Bellow explores the social and medical history of pain treatment, including the rise of opioid use and addiction. Opioid epidemic The United States experienced a significant increase in opioid misuse and addiction, starting in the late 1990s, leading to what is commonly known as the opioid epidemic. Dopsic, dealers, doctors, and the drug company that addicted America by Beth Messi provides an in depth examination of the opioid crisis and its impact on communities. The use of opioids to treat pain first became prevalent in the United States in the early 1860s as a way to treat wounded soldiers. These soldiers were treated with morphine and many drug dependencies and addictions to the drug in the years following the war. Prevalence of opioids. The prevalence of opioids, use, and addiction has been on the rise in recent years. In the United States, opioid related deaths have more than quadrupled since 1999 and over 2 million Americans suffer from opioid use disorder. In 2019, more than 49,000 Americans died from opioid overdoses. According to the World Report 2020, opioids are the most harmful substance of abuse worldwide, causing the highest burden of disease and death. In addition to the United States, other countries including Canada, Australia, and some European countries have also experienced a rise in opioid use and addiction. The opioid epidemic has been driven by various factors, including the overprescripting of opioids by healthcare providers, the availability of illicit opioids such as heroin and fentanyl, and the lack of access to addiction treatment services. Mystery and pharmacology of opioids. Opioids are a class of drugs that act on opioid receptors in the central and peripheral nervous system. They are primarily used for pain management, but can also have sedative and euphoric effects. Opioids can be derived from natural sources, such as opium, are synthesized in laboratories. Chemistry of opioids. The chemical structure of opioids consists of two main components. First is a chemical group that interacts with opioid receptors, and second is a variable size chain that can affect the drug potency, duration of action, and other properties. Pharmacology of opioids. Opioids work by binding to specific opioid receptors in the body, including mu, delta, and kappa receptors. Activation of these receptors produces a range of effects, including cavity, sedation, and euphoria. However, opioids also have significant side effects, including respiratory depression, nausea, vomiting, constipation, and addiction. Now I'm going to discuss medical uses of opioids. Opioids are a class of medication that act on the opioid receptors in the body, providing pain relief and producing a range of effects including sedation and euphoria. While opioids can be highly effective in managing pain, they also carry significant risks, including the potential for dependence addiction, and overdose. It is crucial to use opioid only under the supervision of a healthcare professional and according to prescribed guidelines. Here are some medical uses of opioid. Pain, man pain management. Opioids are frequently used to treat acute and severe pain, such as post-operative pain trauma related pain and cancer pain. They can provide effective relief when other analgesics are in at 
2023. Commonly used opioids for pain management include morphine, oxycodone, hydrocodone, and fentanyl. Acute pain. Opioids are frequently used for the management of acute pain, such as pain, falling surgery, or traumatic injury. Palliative care. Opioids play a crucial role in palliative care for patients with advanced illnesses, such as cancer or end stage organ failure. They help alleviate their pain and provide comfort to patients nearing the end of life. The goal is to improve quality of life by managing pain and enhancing overall well-being. Cough suppression. Some OPIs such as cutine and hydrocodone may be used as anti duty Cough suppression medication. Anesthesia and surgical settings. OPIs are frequently used in anesthesia to induce sedation and energy during surgical procedures. They can be administered in intravenously, epidurally, or in other forms to provide pain relief before, during, and after surgery. Labor pain. OPIs can be used during labor to help manage the pain associated with childbirth. Types of OPI. There are several types of OPI, which are a class of drugs that act on the OPI receptors in the brain to relieve pain. There are some types of OPI. Morphine. Morphine is one of the most well known and widely used OPI. It is derived from the opium poppy plant and is a potent pain reliever. Morphine is often used in hospitals for severe pain, such as after surgery or for cancer related pain. Codine. Codine is another OPI that is derived from the opium poppy plant. It is less potent than morphine and it is often used as a curve suppression or for mild to moderate pain relief. Oxycodone. Oxycodone is a semi-synthetic opioid that is derived from the brain, a component of opium. It is commonly prescribed for moderate to severe pain and is available in immediate release and extended release formulations. Hydrocodone. Hydrocodone is a semi-synthetic opioid that is similar to codine. It is often combined with Acid amino fine, such as in Vicodin and is prescribed for moderate to severe pain. Fentanyl. Fentanyl is a potent synthetic OPI that is much stronger than morphine. It is often used in medical settings for severe pain management, such as during surgery or for chronic pain. Fentanyl is also illegally produced and sold as a recreational drug which has contributed to the OPI crisis. Methadone Methadone is a synthetic OPI that is primarily used for OPI addiction, treatment and is a pain reliever for severe pain. It has a long duration of action and is often used in OPI maintenance programs. And the last is Buprenorphine. Buprenorphine is a partial opioid agonist that is used for opioid addiction treatment and as a pain reliever. It has a lower risk of respiratory depression compared to other opioids and can be prescribed in an office-based setting. Opioid abuse and addiction. Opioid abuse and addiction is a serious problem affecting many people. If you or someone you know is struggling with opioid abuse or addiction, there are resources available to help. One option is to seek out a healthcare professional who can provide guidance on treatment options and support. Additionally, there are support groups and 
rehabilitation centers that can provide support, education, and resources to help individuals overcome opioid addiction. It's important to remember that recovery is a process and it requires commitment and support. But with the right resources and mindset, it is possible to overcome opioid addiction and achieve a happier, healthier life. Signs and symptoms of opioid increase tolerance. Over time, individuals may need higher and higher doses of opioid to achieve the same effect they once felt at lower dosages. Cravings Individuals with opioid addiction may have strong cravings or urges to use opioid even when they know it is harmful. Social and occupational problems Opioid addiction can cause a range of social and occupational problems such as difficulties maintaining a job or trouble with personal relationships. Neglecting responsibilities Individuals with opioid addiction may begin to neglect important responsibilities such as child care, paying bills, or attending appointments. Changes in behavior People with opioid addiction may display changes in behavior such as irritability, mood swings, or depression. Physical symptoms Pupillary constriction, slow breathing, and slowed heart rate are some of the physical symptoms associated with opioid addiction. There are some signs of opioid overdose. Breathing, breathing will be slow or gone, lips and nails are blue, person is not moving, person may be choking, gurgling or snoring sounds, can't be woken up, skin feels cold and clammy, and pupils are tiny. Treatment Options Medication Educated Treatment MAT MAT involves the use of medications like methadone, buprenorphine, or nazrezone to reduce cravings and withdrawal symptoms while promoting recovery. These medications are used in combination with counseling and behavioral therapy. Behavioral Therapy This type of therapy helps people with opioid addiction and learn to identify and change their negative behaviors and develop coping skills to deal with triggers. Detoxification Detoxification is the process of removing opioids from the body. This can be done in a hospital or specialized detox center to ensure the individual safety. The Opioid Epidemic the opioid epidemic is a serious and complex issue. As an all assistance, I can provide you with information and resources to learn more about it or connect you with poor services. If you or someone you know is struggling with opioid addiction. Causes of opioid Prescription drug marketing Pharmaceutical companies aggressively market it. Prescription opioids to doctors, don't blame their addictive potential and encouraging their use for treating chronic pain. Lack of monitoring. There was a lack of monitoring and regulation in place to prevent over prescription, fraudulent prescriptions, doctor shopping, and other forms of diversion. Individual distribution. Individuals and organizations. Illegally distributed OPI, providing access for those with no prescription. Overlapping factors. This crisis is complex and the causes are often intertwined. For example, a person may begin taking opioids off the prescription and then turn to illegal substances if they cannot afford the reality of their medication. Consequences of OPI. The consequences of opioid use and abuse can be devastating to individuals, families, and communities. 
some of the major consequences of opioid epidemic in youth. Addiction. Opioid addiction is a significant consequence of opioid use and abuse. Addiction can develop rapidly and can cause damage to the brain reward system. Making it challenging to get off opioids. Overdose. Opioid overdose is a life threatening condition that can result in respiratory failure, coma, and death. This is of particular concern since opioids relax the muscles, including those that control breathing. Physical and mental health issues. Opioid use can lead to physical and mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, chronic pain, constipation, nausea, vomiting, and a range of other conditions. Financial burden. Acquiring and using opioids can become a significant financial burden to the individual and their family when addicted individuals may spend significant portions of their income on drugs, leading to a ripple effect with spending at home. Legal consequences. Using opioids is illegal without a doctor's prescription, and many individuals have been arrested and imprisoned for drug use. This has significant impact on their future prospects, including their ability to get a job and contribute positively to society. Overcrowded emergency departments. In recent years, emergency departments have become inundated with opioid-related emergencies, taking up space on vital beds and costing healthcare systems significant resources. The scale and impact of the opioid epidemic are enormous and it is essential to increase awareness and prevention before the epidemic reaches a breaking point. Current trends of opioids the number of drug overdose deaths increased by nearly 30% from 2019 to 2020 and has been triplet since 1999. Nearly 75% of the 91,799 drug overdose deaths in 2020 involved an opioid. From 2019 to 2020, there were significant changes in opioids involved that says opioid involved that rate increased by 38 percent. Regulation of opioids. The regulation of opioids can vary depending on the country and specific laws in place. In general, opioids are highly regulated due to their potential for addiction and abuse. One common way that opioids are regulated is through prescription requirements. Many objects can only be obtained through a prescription from a licensed healthcare provider. This has ensured that the medication is being used appropriately and under the supervision of a medical professional. Additionally, many countries have laws in place that restrict the production, distribution, and sale of opioids. This can include regulations around the quantity of opioids that can be prescribed, as well as requirements for taking and reporting opioid use. Overall, the goal of opioid regulation is to ensure that these powerful medications are used safely and appropriately, while also preventing abuse and addiction. The regulation of OPI primarily involves federal and state laws that aim to control the manufacturing, dispensing, and abuse of drugs that contain OPI. Many states have also passed laws putting limits on the number of OPI prescriptions that can be written by a physician. In addition, most states have mandatory prescriptions drug disposal program, programs to reduce the risk of misuse and abuse of opioid drugs. The regulation of opioids also involves promoting safe and responsible use of drugs.
This includes education of healthcare providers and patients on the risks associated with opioids, their addictive potential, and how to use them safely. It also includes promoting alternative pain management techniques and encouraging access to addiction treatment services. And the last topic of my presentation is Future of OPIs. The future of OPIs is multifaceted with numerous potential changes in their manufacture, regulation, and use. On the one hand, researchers are exploring new ways to manufacture OPIs to reduce their potential for addiction and abuse. These include exploring new formulations of OPIs that are more difficult to crush or dissolve, and therefore less likely to be snorted or injected. Efforts are underway to improve prescription, drug monitoring, increase access to addiction treatment, and develop new pain management techniques that do not rely on opioids. Additionally, research is ongoing to better understand the underlying causes of the epidemic and identify effective prevention and treatment strategies. Researchers are also exploring the use of other medications such as nitrogen to help curb the addictive effects of opioids. On the other hand, lawmakers and regulators are working to tighten restrictions on opioids, including potentially reclassifying them as scheduled drugs. The U.S. government has also launched a number of initiatives to combat OVI addiction, such as expanding access to medication-assisted treatment and increasing funding for addiction research. An other important trend is the greater use of non opioid pain management strategies to treat chronic pain. Patients are increasingly seeking alternative treatment, such as acupuncture, therapeutic massage, and cognitive behavioral therapy. Additionally, healthcare providers are exploring new technologies like regenerative medicine and electrical stimulation to address pain. In some way, the future of OPIs is likely to see continued security and regulation, as well as increased interest in alternative pain management strategies. So, here are the references of my topic. And here are the links of my topic. Thank you.